welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. In this episode, Jake gives a long-winded explanation of electrical theory. All right, there's an important element to how we're going to connect this, and I'm going to try not to get down a massive rabbit hole of theory here, and if it sounds over your head, it's probably a good indication that you wouldn't want to tackle something like this yourself. Uh, but what I'm going to get at is the difference between grounding and bonding, and what a grounded conductor is versus a bonding conductor and a grounding conductor. And uh, I don't know if the names of these are the same in different countries. This is the Canadian... Uh, from the Canadian code, but the concepts are and it's just important to know the difference between them. Basically the short version is that the neutral bus should be isolated, like not electrically connected to the case or the uh, bonding bus or anything metal in here. You can see that it's up on plastic mounts and that it's totally on its own isolated. If you look into your house's main panel, you'll see the complete opposite. And in fact, the cable, which is the grounding conductor that goes and connects to the rod or plate that's buried in the ground, that comes into the panel and goes right to the neutral. And then it's also connected to the can and to everything and it's all interconnected. And that's correct. And that's the one spot and there should only ever be one spot where that happens. But uh, if you have a garage panel or a tiny house coming off of that same kind of situation, you have a remote panel, that should be isolated, have the neutral not connect interconnected to that stuff. Depending on the type of panel that you get, it might have a piece of metal like a jumper connected between the neutral and the can that you need to remove. You, it would be up to you to identify that the location that you're installing the panel is such that it does not require that and in fact requires that it be removed. The theory is that all these bare bonding copper conductors connected to screw terminals in boxes like these and these and basically everywhere is to allow you to electrically connect everything metal in the whole system and basically in the whole house so that if a wire becomes damaged and touches anything metal uh, there's an electrical path for the current to flow and eventually find its way all the way back to the main panel and that current flowing will hopefully trip the breaker and shut off that dangerous situation and then if there was uh, a break in that path so like say this box uh, was not interconnected into that system the bonded system and a wire in there touched this box it could then become live and then you got the situation where if I come up and touch this and then touch something that is part of the bonded system, then I become that missing link and I get zapped. So it's basically a safety system in place to allow current to, like an unwanted current to flow and trip that breaker and shut off a, a dangerous situation. But in normal operation, there's no current flowing on it. Obviously there's no current flowing through any of these boxes or anything except to uh, prevent a hazard. The neutral, on the other hand, always has current flowing on it in a regular operation. So if we've got our toaster oven going in here, the current flows out of the panel, goes to the toaster oven, it comes back to here, back to the neutral bus. So if the neutral bus was connected to the bonded system here, from here back to the source, which is the main house's panel, it could now potentially flow both on the neutral and on the bonding conductor. And now we've got a situation where in normal operation, there is current flowing on the bonding conductor. And there's all sorts of reasons why that can present a dangerous situation. And basically you don't want that. So it's important to know and understand this whole concept and see the big picture. Uh, to know whether or not you need to have your neutral connected to the system. And there may be cases where you would want it connected. If, for example, you're totally off-grid and you're generating your own power, you may be creating that one spot where the neutral does touch the whole grounding system. But now we're talking about all sorts of different situations. And basically the, the short version is um, if you're not totally confident on what I'm talking about here and uh, how this works and the whole, s how it produces a safe situation, um, you should definitely uh, consult someone who does basically understand it.
If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles, and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here.